1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. But because of sexual sins, let each man have his own woman, and let each woman have her own man. Let the man render to the woman her due, and likewise also the woman to the man. The woman hath not power over her own body, but the man. And likewise also the man hath not power over his own body, but the woman. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be by consent for a season that ye may give yourselves to prayer, and may be together again, that Shatana test you not because of your incontinency. But this I say according to concession, not according to a mandate. Yet I would that all men were even as I myself, howbeit each man hath his own gift from God, one after this manner, and another after that. But I say to the unmarried, and to widows, It is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they have not continency, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. But to the married I give charge, yea, not I, but the Lord, that a woman is not to become separated from her man. But even if she was separated, let her be remaining unmarried, or let her become reconciled to her man. And a man is not to leave or dismiss his woman. But to the rest say I, not the Lord. If any brother hath an unbelieving woman, and she is content to dwell with him, let him not be leaving her. And the woman that hath an unbelieving man, and he is content to dwell with her, let her not be leaving her man. For the unbelieving man is sanctified in the woman, and the unbelieving woman is sanctified in the brother. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. Yet if the unbelieving one is separating or remaining separate, let him be separating or remaining separate. The brother or the sister in such circumstances has not become enslaved to the unbeliever for the sake of preserving togetherness against the unbeliever's will. But the God hath called you to be in peace. For how knowest thou, O woman, whether thou shalt save thy man? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy woman? Only as the Lord hath distributed to each man, as God hath called each, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all the assemblies. Was any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Hath any been called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commands of God. Let each man abide in that calling wherein he was called. Wast thou called being a bondservant? Care not for it, nay, even if thou canst become free, use it rather. For he that was called in the Lord, being a bondservant, is Lord Yahweh's freedman. Likewise, he that was called being free, is anointed's bondservant. Ye were bought with a price, become not bondservants of men. Brothers, let each man, wherein he was called, therein abide with God. Now concerning virgins, I have not a mandate of Lord Yahweh, but I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of Lord Yahweh to be trustworthy. 
I think therefore that this is good by reason of the distress that is upon us, namely, that it is good for a man to be as he is. Art thou bound to a woman? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a woman by her death? Seek not a woman. But shouldst thou marry, having been loosed from thy woman by her death, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Yet such shall have tribulation in the flesh, and I would spare you. But I say, brothers, the time is shortened, that henceforth both those that have women may be as though they had none, and those that weep as though they wept not, and those that rejoice as though they rejoiced not, and those that buy as though they possessed not, and those that use the world as not using it to the full. For the fashion of this world passeth away. But I would have you to be free from anxiety. He that is unmarried is being anxious for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married is being anxious for the things of the world, how he may please his woman, and is divided. So also the woman that is unmarried and the virgin is being anxious for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married is being anxious for the things of the world, how she may please her man. And this I say for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is seemly, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man thinketh that he behaveth himself unseemly toward his virgin daughter, if she be beyond prime, and if need so requireth, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. But he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power concerning his own will, and hath determined this in his own heart to keep his own virgin, shall do well. So then both he that giveth his own virgin daughter in marriage doeth well, and he that giveth not her in marriage shall do better. A woman is bound for so long time as her man liveth, but if the man be dead, she is free to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she abide as she is, after my judgment. And I think that I also have the Spirit of God.